Hey guys, um, wait, oh, I'm still setting up the stream. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's Christopher and welcome to this new uh, live streaming. Let me check that everything is rocking. Hey Dalvac, Diarendor. Uh, I didn't set up the donation bar this time. Uh, it's been a while since my last stream. But let's open Solaris Quest Editor Source Code. Um, yeah, it's been a while because of my new job. And. Mm, 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 shuffle this playlist. Next. Okay. Um, so a lot of things were done uh, since my last stream in all projects, all Solaris related projects, uh, the quest editor, the, the engine, and all games. Uh, maybe you saw uh, the streamings from uh, Bambin Zelda Force in French on his project, Owing to the Dream. Uh, maybe you also played Zelda XD2 that is now available in English. But um, today I will try to continue the work on Solaris Quest Editor 1.6. And in particular there is a nice new feature that is uh, still in progress. And I... It was done. Uh, I don't think it, I don't think I worked on it uh, <coughs> during live streamings because uh, I was I was not able to stream a lot recently, but I was still able to work. Hi, my uh, my friend. So I, I'm streaming mainly on Twitch because. Uh, it's better for everything that's uh, gaming related, for example Olivier made this nice um, banners, so the, the Twitch description is now great. <laughs> but uh, I'm also streaming on YouTube, because uh, one thing that might be annoying on Twitch is that, at least today in this stream, you cannot change the set you cannot send set the quality of the video so if you have a low connection you are stuck with uh, 720 pixels which might be a lot hi 12k away still compiling the quest editor also i was a bit sick so uh, I was not really able to stream earlier this week, even if I was here. So Dalvac, so you're Ray, Ray, Ray Tara, which means that uh, Ray Tara is also a new name. Right, I think I know you and your project. So if you have any question related to 1.6 or whatever, Solaris games, um, Zelda XD2, I will answer them. Okay, compilation ready. I hope the, mu the music is not too loud and that you can hear me correctly. Oh, okay, mine frame, mine friend, sorry, 12k away. That's you. It's fine. Uh, I'm, I also have several nicknames sometimes. <laughs> okay. Mm, so I opened some project here, but uh, the new feature I was working on recently is very very useful one that I really want for 1.6 now that we have really multiple projects 
and that we are providing resource packs to users, we want to be able to import files more easily from one project from another one. So um, you have a source quest here, you can browse it and select your source quest and select one or several files and import which means copy and um, yeah by the way what happens if I select the same quest did I protect against this source and destination quests are the same okay not allowed <laughs> great um, so the feature basically works For example, um, I don't really want to import anything into Mer um, um, Zelda XD2, but maybe I want to import something from. Um, it's complicated because there are so many quests. So a simple quest and Solaris. There's also a free resource pack. Wait. <laughs> I want to... Yeah. I want to import from the Solaris free resource pack. That's what, what a lot of users will do. <laughs> um, two Solaris sample quests. And this will also help me um, clean up everything, uh, reorganize uh, sprites, sounds, music from all projects. All free projects and all Zelda projects. <coughs> so um, we should probably have a lot of stuff here. Hmm. Let's say this is your quest and you want to import the, some music from the Solaris free resource pack. Um, and there is also this author and license information. It's one of the thing, things we will do when we uh, reorganize uh, everything, uh, all resources is put the license information here in these columns because for now they are only in the license.txt file <laughs> but um, yeah the this import feature is especially useful because it does copy the author and license information as well a at least it will <laughs> Um, well, wait, if I do that, I don't think it works for now. Yes, it should work because there is already an Eduardo folder. Import. Yeah, so what I think... One thing I should do tonight is to continue the work on this feature because it's still in progress. Right now you see that it did copy, copy the file, but it did not add it to the quest. Alright. Mm. Okay, remove the file for now. And also if I copy a folder, it's not implemented yet. And if I copy a file that inside a folder that does not exist in the destination quest, I don't think it can work. And you don't have a really good message. So in this case I should create the necessary directories. So we'll try to do this kind of stuff tonight. Okay, so import dialogue. There's a lot of to do. Um, yeah, maybe I should. 
I uh, should also set the author and license information to be able to uh, test this feature. Okay, children of Sora. Uh, no, Sora is free resource pack. But this free resource pack was n uh, haven't been hasn't been updated for a while. Latest commit was seven months ago, and it was just a bug fix. But for 1.6, I will update it with everything that was done in in particular Children of Solaris by Dairendor. That's why we need to be to uh, we need this import feature to easily be able to copy a lot of files and their associ associated information. Okay, so maybe you should open Children of Solaris instead. Mm, except that no, New Link told me not to touch this project for now because he will make some commits and he doesn't have access to internet. So and now is probably not a good time to change the resource database file. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so I will after all open the Solaris free resource pack again and put some information here so let's open the license.txt file This will be really helpful helpful to put the information here instead of in a separate file because when someone adds a file uh, he always forgets to update his license file including if it's me and maybe sometimes we rename some files and we forget to update this one and it's very easy to forget some files and very hard to check every file if uh, is this list up to date it's never very clear for example this font file I we can now put the author properly and uh, he wants to put this his website And the license is Creative Commons. Boom. And for example, 8 bit, no information. Okay, public domain. I won't do the this work on the whole project tonight, don't worry. <laughs> We will do it um, eventually before the, the 1.6 release. But I want to put the information in a few ones um, to be able to test the, the import feature. For music, it's quite easy because they are nicely organized in folders and they are all Creative Commons by SA4.0 and since they are organized in folders I will put the information only on the folder and I put nothing on individual f individual files meaning that it's it applies to uh, the whole folder Eduardo Okay, so I guess I already have a, a few interesting cases to test. Scripts, everything is also um, Creative Commons in scripts. 
and let's say that I am the author of all these ones and if some other scripts come from uh, other people we will be able to put another author on individual files that's not a, really a problem this one is also me and uh, we'll do the rest later anyway we have to reorganize and there's a lot of missing stuff here okay Right now it's quite a mess. We have some resources in the free resource pack, others in the sample quest, others in Children of Solarius, and uh, we have to verify that uh, none is missing. In particular, everything should be in the uh, in the free resource pack. Okay, um, now let's add, I mean let's open, which one was it, sample quest, what do we have here, we have some uh, missing musics, and we have the same fonts, okay, so for example, what should we do when we import a file that already exists? But there is some information that we don't have in the destination quest. We should ask confirmation and um, destination file already exists. Do you want to overwrite? Yes, even if it's exactly the same. Well, I hope. <laughs> Let's check that we are not missing anything here. Diff fonts 8 bit with the one from the Solaris resource pack. No difference in Minecraft here. Yeah. No diff. Okay, good. So, yes, we can do that. And ta da! We now have the updated meta information. Same for this one. Yes, and that's great. So it was quite an easy case, actually. Uh, um, contrary to what I said at the beginning of the stream, I already implemented the uh, copying uh, author and license stuff. But what I didn't implement is copying a folder or copying something that's inside a folder that doesn't exist yet. That's a bit more tricky. Oh, and also, yeah, first of all, copying something that is declared as a resource. We should not only copy the file, but also add it to the quest. Let's try to do that. Handle declared resources. Okay. So, um, we are in a function that is copying a single file and not a directory, right? Oh, no assertion needed, I already checked it here. 
the guy who calls this function is actually um, yeah right here if it's a directory there will be a function import dir that is not implemented yet and if it's a file regular file I, co I copy the regular file already implementing the confirmation with the yes to all, no to all. This was working. Handle declared resources. Okay. So if source quest is resource element source path and the other two parameters are actually uh, out parameters. Resource type Q string element ID. If it's a resource element, uh, then it should also stay a resource element in the destination quest. Um, how do I do that again? Resource type element ID. Wait, something is missing here. Description. Yeah, not in the path. It's implicit in the element ID and the description. I need the description. String description equals source quest um, get a resource description or something like that. It's, it's database actually. get description resource type element id and this create resource element stuff does create the files so I need to think what happens if you well if they already exist which is the case because I already did the copa the copy operation. That's fine, it will just add a declaration to the quest. But what happens if uh, it's a resource that needs multiple files, like a map. A map has a dat file and a lua script file. Let's say I only copied the, the dat file because Files are copied one by one. Uh, I don't really want to create the Lua file automatically. So let's just instead quest database. Decision quest and get database. Um Add resource element? No. Create resource element? No. Don't remember the name of the function. Oh, it's just add. Okay, add. Resource type ID description. So, um, yeah. No implicit stuff. It's very simple. I, I copy the file and its meta information, but if it's a resource that needs multiple files, the user has to copy the multiple files explicitly. For example, um, let's say you want to copy a tile set. Okay, no tile set here. <laughs> no map in the resource pack. Yeah, I don't have a great example. Uh, 
doesn't matter, let's take another quest. Children of Solaris. This tile set uh, actually need needs this PNG file. And that's another another new feature of 1.6. We show PNG files here. So uh, you would need to import both if you only import the tile set. Um, it will copy the file, except that it, it doesn't know, it didn't create the folder automatically, I still have to do that. But it, it, it would copy the file and add it as a tile set, but you won't be able to use it properly if you forget to copy the PNG file. But that's maybe that's an option that we will add later. Which is if you try to copy a tile set, um, actually do everything like if both files were selected. Okay. Let's see if it worked. Already have the boss music here. Cave. Okay, nothing happened. I'm not sure what was wrong here. Oh, <laughs> okay, wrong folder. Yeah. It works. This time it was, it was copied as a resource. Okay. That was the first step I wanted to do tonight. Main.lua. Oh, yeah. Yes, Diandor, you're right. resource pack I put the wrong license scripts are GPL all scripts are GPL <laughs> creative common license is for art but um, okay I can already commit this small improvement Um, copy the resource information. Okay, um, but I need to test it a little bit more. Because there are several cases with resources. A resource is, is a resource element is a file that uh, What? Uh, source quest was supposed to be the free source pack now. And destination quest? Sample quest? Children of Solaris to sample quest. Uh, 
Okay, so second case. The file already exists but is not declared as a resource. So yes, and it works. And third case, the file already exists and I mean no, is already declared as a resource but does not exist on the file system so I'm removing the file by hand Eduardo boss okay so it's declared but missing so it shows up here with this icon fichier introuvable en français yeah so here it, it gets imported without uh, any confirmation I think it's fine So okay, my current quest is a very simple quest, right? If I close the editor and I open it without any argument It's a very simple quest, okay Okay, that's fine Next, next thing, create the directory or the directories if they don't exist when you import something, if I import carousel it's not working ok so for this maybe I, it would be nicer to update my file tools file completely different and make a function I'm um, create directories or something like that that um, directories leading to a path exist and throws editor exception in case of error because it can happen that we are not able to create the necessary directories for example, if um, there's already a file that exists with the name of a directory in the path and if that file is not a directory, uh, uh, that's a problem Ok, how do we even do that? Maybe there's a Qt function for that? You added recently since to Children of Sorrows Die on Door? Nice. Maybe I just didn't update the, the project. Yeah, let's check that. Actually, I was saying that the resource pack wasn't updated. No, it wasn't. It hasn't been updated for a while. And a sample quest. Already up to date and children of Solaris. Yeah, it was really not the latest version. 
that I had. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the question is, does it exist in Qt? Apparently, it might be the QDIR class. Oh, there is a function make path create the directory path dir path. The function will create all parent directories necessary to create the directory. Return true if successful, otherwise return false. If the path already exists, it will return true, so it looks like what I want. Except that I, ha I have to remove the last part is it a static function It's not a static function, but um, it doesn't use the current object at all, so it's a bit strange. Apparently it's supposed to be used l like this. The only problem is that if I do that, will be uh, when the import feature is finished. So, um, what was I testing again? Musics. Yeah, let's try to copy this music. Looks like it worked. Yeah, great. It did create the folder. What could be nice is to make selected what was co just copied and to uh, unfold the tree to expand the tree yeah let's do that let's commit this single feature <laughs> import dialog create parent directory if necessary and then back to the import dialog after everything is copied mm, there is a get selected path is there also a set selected yeah but only the singular form oh. well it's because the multiple selection is a new feature of the tree but we can easily do that won't be a const function const qstring list p 
pass. and clears the previous selection ensure that the parent of the item is visible like that. Yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. Also ensure that the parent of the item is visible. Is expanded. That the items are expanded. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Simple. Also ensure that. I never know if I should put a that or not. When in make sure or ensure. Or unless. Unless if. Uh, anyway. Select the item corresponding to space fine. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. To select, not to selected. An empty list. List and selects any previous pass. Good. So section model clear and uh, we'll just do the same but in a list except that it won't be clear and select we already cleared everything here so just select And now we can, to avoid duplicated code, we can just wait. Call the other function, but if path is empty, uh, clear and re return. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. We we would call the other function with a list of a single element which would be an empty string well it, it would work by chance because we checked that the index is valid here but it's not clean at all set selected pass q string list with the single pass okay back to import dialog My friend, meanwhile I was translating Zelda AXD2. I looked for. Oh, yeah, you're translating Zelda XD2 in Spanish, right? I looked for reference on the ZXD1 and saw a bunch of errors and wonder if I. When I finish. Yeah, uh, sure, you can make some pull requests on ZSXD as well to improve the Spanish translation, no problem. And Diorender will. Uh, will be. <laughs> The, the, the best guy to uh, accept them since you know he's Spanish. Hi Adrian, hi 
early cubs oh, old cubs sorry at what age did you start to program um 15 uh, before i had a computer i was uh, already making zelda games but on paper <laughs> I was drawing some mazes and puzzles. What's the status with 1.6? Yes, I totally should do more, more live streamings, but I had a new job recently, and during the first months I was n almost never home, and I was not able to stream in, in really good conditions from there. But now I will be here more and more, and I will stream really, really more often. I really want because you guys are very support supportive. Um, so what's the status with 1.6? Uh, let me just finish this function. Set selected pass plural destination pass, which means that I need. A list of destination paths and I don't have it in this function but actually uh, this function computes it internally so let's just say that it can return it no oh yes import pass which is not very readable I prefer const q string uh, destination path. And this one will return uh, the destination path. Pass to the file, the created file in the destination quest. The corresponding file, because it can happen that the file already exists and the user um, just ig ignores it. But we still want to return the pass in this case. Which means that this guy should return QString and this guy as well and this guy as well. And if there is an exception at some point, I still want to select what was successfully copied actually, if there is an exception. So, if something was done, if not, this is empty. At least select uh, what was successfully copied. So, um, it will be very clear what was done and what was not done. Okay, that's nice. But uh, I need to update my comments. Pass the corresponding file or directory here to destination quest. And pass to the corresponding directory in the destination quest. And I also need to change the declarations and to actually return something so the, the else the else part is n not really necessary but uh, I think it's more readable to keep it but that's really not important here return destination pass I already had it I told you and here return Q string
This is not done yet. Oh, yeah, I need to return something in all cases. If I say no, then nothing is returned. Return an empty string. An empty string means that uh, the import was uh, not cancelled, just uh, skipped for this file. Uh. Directory. And guess what? File or directory. So, uh, yeah, Adrian, thanks for checking the site and the forum uh, every day. Uh, you can also, I mean, you probably already <laughs> do. Yeah, subscribe to my Twitter account and to the Twitter of Solaris Game. There are even more updates. Um, import from a quest. Okay, let's say I want to copy this music. It should not only create the directory but also expand it and show me what was copied. Awesome. Yay. Same thing if I... Let's say copy everything here and the funny thing is that some files already exist. Actually, I, I, I was checking the wrong folder again. Some files already exist. But they don't have the meta information so maybe I will say yes when it asks me to overwrite yes to everything hmm actually maybe I should update the selection um, continuously I say, if I, I say yes yes it would be nice to see yeah to update the selection right now instead of only at the end here so at least it works, but I, I, I want to improve it just a little bit. So, first I need to revert the changes to be able to test again in the sample quest. Git checkout project db that and uh, there is a git command to remove all untracked files, but I don't remember. git remove untracked files git clean let's say git clean musics but I need, yeah, I need dash n to see what it would remove and let's say like the, the correct stuff. So git clean dash f musics. Okay. Oh, I'm working the branch, I'm working branch shaders. Anyway. Hi, Trevor's TV Live. Is importing files from a pr another project a recent feature? Yes, it's very, very recent. Um, I must have started it before the a link to the dream game jam, but uh, it was not really working or just uh, the basic stuff. And now I'm continuing the work on this feature. 
Okay. Let's say that um, typical case you have some musics, but not all from some from the resource pack or from the, uh, a project, and the author of the source project updated something and added stuff. So import. Uh, replace, yes. Okay, great. It looks like it's working. Let's remove some random stuff. Oh, yeah, we can't remove yet multiple files at once. The multiple session was implemented in the tree only for this import feature. But now that it exists, it makes absolutely, absolutely no sense not to be able to s remove several files uh, at once. Uh, it's really, really annoying that it's not possible. It was less annoying when single session only existed, because if you can only select one file at least, you are not expecting the feature to be here, but now that you can... Ugh. And uh, by the way... So yeah, I want to add an issue and since it's very annoying to... Um, implement it before 1.6 as well. What? No. Um, okay, I wrote to remove uh, multiple files. I don't see it. I'm just checking is, uh, if the GitHub issue already exists before I actually create it. No, it doesn't exist. Allow to remove multiple files at once from the quest tree. Now that multiple selection is supported, it is very frustrating not to be able to delete multiple files at once. <laughs> Improvement Enhancement 1.6. Okay, and at least I cannot forget it later. <coughs> yeah, the multiple section is also allowed in the main tree here. So we, we really want to be able to do it. Okay, uh, let's revert that again to test it differently. Git status clean. Check out project DB. So I want to... Oh, I didn't even make the change I was just talking about before, which is select the path uh, continuously. This function will not be useful after all. Hmm, maybe it will. I don't know. <laughs> I I no longer need the result. I'll 
I just I still need to know if it was a success or if it was uh, skipped. So if not destination pass is empty, then let's say add selected pass like this. Quest review. This function will actually not be used. But add selected path. But let's put it here. Select the item corresponding. So, um, clears any previous selection. Ah, which is also true for that one. Oh, I already sent it. And here's the contrary, keeps a proof section. So to the selection. It's be less verbose. Add the specified file pass to the selection. It's clear enough. An empty string. Um, let's say nothing happens if the pass does not exist in the tree. is selected if the path does not exist in the tree. I want very clear comments because uh, it's never completely obvious what happens exactly in all cases. Even if the function is very short, it's nice to document it properly and later we'll see that we can use it or not. that do not exist in the tree are ignored. Okay. And let's finally implement this one. It will be similar to that one. Oops. So no clear, no loop. And if index is valid I should say if not index is valid return. Let's get rid of the exceptional cases first and then do the work. Um, so how do I add to the selection? Yeah, just like that, select. Okay. 
Does it work? Um, Eduardo, let's try that. For example, if I want to copy, let's say this one, these ones. And, okay. We can see that the first three of the list were copied, and then I have a confirmation message. I can say yes or no. I say no. And the last one gets copied. And we have the selection. It's very nice. We can see what was imported exactly. Okay, great. It's working. Uh, so the next and probably final step should be to uh, allow to copy to copy a, a directory. Importing directories is not supported yet. And by the way, nothing should happen if you import if you try to import the root file, alright? Root directory. It feels a bit too much. But I don't know, maybe. Why not? Oh, I forgot to answer your question, Adrian. I said I wanted to finish my function, now it's finished. Let's make a commit. Import dialog. Um, select destination passes created for me it's almost the best new feature of the 1.6 release this import dialog because it really really is a mess it was a mess so far to maintain resources across all our projects and resource packs and this will really help. But what else do we have in the 1.6 release of the editor? Um, this will be the opportunity to summarize what was done and what will be done. Just recompiling because uh, I, I had an update to do. I was not really up to date. Uh, what else? What what uh, what is new for 1.6? Well, shaders. Uh, well, I'll we'll do some live streamings um, dedicated to shaders. Now maybe I already did some. I already showed a lot of things with shaders. Um, it's still a work in progress, and we still have to make a nice editor, visual editor. Even it will still be mostly code, um, and this one, this one is very old. It, it won't really look like that. I mean, all of this will disappear. <laughs> but um, yeah, shaders, in short, allow you to add some really nice graphical effects on the rendering. And thanks to the very the very nice work of STD Greg War, you will also be able to apply shaders to individual surfaces and sprites, which is awesome. He showed us um, uh, the result of some preliminary experiments, and if it's absolutely incredible. But uh, yeah, shaders. What else? Um, auto ties, of course. Auto ties were the main reasons why the main reason why I want this release to uh, be available as soon as possible. I probably won't be able to show a lot of that with a sample quest because it's out outdated. But children of Solaris. When you make your house, (laughs) 
it's just an example, but you just put the floor. Let's say I don't know like this. It can have quite a complicated shape. A lot of you probably already know about auto tiles because I made a lot of live streamings about them. But um, it's quite, simi quite similar to RPG Maker, except that it's more powerful. <laughs> because they can have any size. Uh, they are called auto tiles, but it's, mm, it's more about borders. Uh, generating some tiles around the border of whatever is selected. And you choose your border set. Uh, in this example, we had a lot of wall colors. So it's easy to get lost, but once you know your tile set, it's very handy. Let's say I want to use the same color as this, which is actually the first one of the list. Um, but they are in alphabetical order, but we can see that it's brown, brown, right? So wall brown is the first one here, and Control B or add border tiles here. It will generate the necessary tiles, and then you generate the second layer. Again, like this, and a third time in this particular tie set example. And here we are. You have your room. And if you want to do that with 1.5, well, it's possible, but um, it will take at least, let's say, mm, 5 to 10 minutes if you're good. But here, I was a bit slow since I was talking a lot, but uh, and it can be much more complicated. And Zelda Retro, if you are watching this stream, please use auto tiles. They're so powerful. You really win, win a lot of time. You can even do some complex stuff. If I want to do this, it should work. Control B. Control B, Control B. Yay! To do this one, mm, 10 to 15 minutes, maybe? And it just took like, uh, mm, I don't know, less than one minute. The longest part being to define the time needed to define the the floor. Okay, so auto tiles are really the best new feature of 1.6 in my opinion. You win a lot of time when you create your maps, and they also work with outside tile sets. Rooms are only one example of complicated borders. But outside, we used them in previous live streaming. You can watch the Children of Solaris live streamings if you want the examples. We used them, I think, to generate that. If, you, if, you want, if we just start with this... Um, Let's find an empty map just for the test. And we choose border set what, uh, deep water to shallow water. Um, I think I forgot some. Yep, I need that, I need that. Deep water to shallow water, boom! And fail. <laughs> Um, water tiles are tricky. I always have problems with them and I'm not sure why. Did I pick the right stuff here? 
every time I try to demonstrate <laughs> auto tires in my streams with water, I uh, I struggle. But I was sure that it worked um, for the this particular example. If we start with something simple like this, obviously it works. Yeah, in in this particular auto tires are generated inside the section. Mm. But if everything is a multiple of sixteen by sixteen, Yeah, it works. It's not the same example, but uh, I was able to to do something. I'm. Hmm. Yeah, since they are generated inside the section, it means that my water tires should be different. Yeah, I won't spend the whole stream like on this. It's frustrating because they are very powerful and they are supposed to be very easy to use. But uh, yeah, you can also make some passes. I need to green flat, and let's say the background is just green. Boom. Yeah, if you ever try to make a Zelda, uh, make um, a map with Zelda graphics, the equivalent uh, uh, dirt passes from Zelda Link to the Past, it takes hours to define this, these tiles, unless you are making very straight, boring stuff. And now with auto tiles, it, it, tiles, it takes seconds. You would just do, for example, that. Can do really a, a complicated one. I'm just trying totally random stuff. It will probably not look so nice, but just to try. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's because uh, the um, it's generated inside the section, so I don't have enough sp enough space. It's a cho choice of the tile set. <laughs> you do your dirt here, and then you put the oops border like that. You you actually cover your tile. You do not put it here. It allows to have any to work the same on any kind of background here. Oops. Well, that's why it's a bit it's a bit less intuitive. Actually, it's the same case of, as water, almost. But anyway, we should do. We should be able to obtain a nice result still if we don't do uh, yeah. too, too narrow stuff. Yay! This takes yeah also 10 to 15 minutes in 
<laughs> in 1.5, but uh, it's, it's, it's a very small pass. I remember spending hours reproducing maps from games. It was very tedious. Hi again, Diorender. Oh no, I'm not re releasing 1.6 tonight, not at all. Uh, not sure if I... I will actually end the stream soon, we'll be the... we'll do the directory import feature later. I want to continue my, uh, sum my summary of new features on 1.6. Because there are other stuff. Maybe you saw it briefly, but you can actually replace a tile. You can see the pattern here now in the edit entity, the edit tile dialog, and there are also custom fields, custom properties on any property on any entity. You can add a key and a value, and it will be accessible from your scripts. This is very useful for all kind of customization. But uh, patterns. Let's say I want to replace the dot tile here by another color. OK. And OK. And yeah, it works. But if I do it from. If I want to do it for all tiles of the map. Oh, I can't, I can't do it for this dialog because it's, the dialog only applies to one particular tile. but like this, you can change pattern of similar tiles. You say OK, and it does it for the whole map. So, um, it looks ugly because <laughs> this color is a bad choice in that example, but you obviously understand how nice it is. If you ever created a game with Solaris, uh, this must have been a problem for you at some point. Uh, you want to replace all occurrences of a pattern by another one. And if you don't want to replace all but only some, you can always use multiple selection. I'm not using an easy example because uh, dirt passes are always hard. But sh we should be okay. Maybe, maybe it will work. Change pattern only of the section. Okay. Of course, I forgot some, but uh, that's what. That's why I said it was a hard example, and it didn't change the other ones. So, uh, really, really nice 1.6 features. <laughs> Animations of more than one frames are also planned for 1.6. I already made the documentation and I have to... The, oh, maybe I should do this in a stream, that's a good idea. Implementing the feature in the, en in the engine will be easy. Um, the data file format is already ready, almost. So, uh, maybe we can do it quite easily in the engine. But it will be most of the work will be in the dataset editor because right now well we yes, there will be some UI work basically. For example, you want to make an animated tile from these five, um, six frames here. Right now you can't. You can just say there is an animation, but uh, it's always with three frames. And you cannot set the delay, so there will be some UI work here to uh, ch set the number of frames, the delay, and whether frames are laid out horizontally or vertically. In this example, it's vertically. And here it's horizontally. So mostly UI work and uh,
But yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. We re we really want this for 1.6 because we need this feature in this particular project to run after hours. And in the resource pack, in the free resource pack, the sample quest, of course, because uh, free projects will have the tileset from Diarendo. This tileset. What else is new? As you can see, we are showing more stuff here, more detailed. Um, it's easier to understand because before we were not showing the Lua file of the map, but uh, actually a map was composed of two files, but we were really only showing the, the map here and you had to do open map script here. Or to do it uh, from this button. This or this uh, really really helps for the import feature. And I'm still hesitating. Should I show all files? Because I still don't show all files. I just added the Lua files and the PNG files. So every time you have a sprite, you often have a PNG file near the sprite. So I show this here. And same for languages, now I show the real directory structure here. So it's closer to the reality. Author and licenses are also a new feature of 1.6, but we already talked about it in this stream. What else do we have? Automatically select the currently open file, so Maybe it doesn't seem much, but when you edit the tileset here, you are in a map, you click edit tileset, boom, and your tileset gets selected. But it didn't expand. I guess that's a small bug. It should have expanded and scrolled uh, to make it visible here. Let's open an issue. Expands the tree and scroll um, w when opening a file. Expand the tree and scroll to the item. The file just opened now gets selected, but uh, it should be the tree should be expanded. Expanded to it, and it should be <laughs> visible. In the visible area, and I will do this for 1.6 because it's a new feature of 1.6, but. Uh, it's not working correctly as it should. Okay, um, I'm reading the change log. What else is new? Auto ties, of course, are great. Um, yeah, and you can configure them from the tileset editor. You can say that uh, here I have all my examples. You create your uh, your border set and you set uh, the four edges and the four convex corners and the four concave corners. And also that stuff I briefly mentioned before but I was unable to uh, demonstrate it correctly. <laughs> Outside the section or inside the section. Sometimes you need to. It's easier to use when you set outside the section, but sometimes you need inside the section. 
Um, custom properties, very useful. Yeah, for example, uh, this is a custom entity. But uh, let's say you want to associate, uh, I don't know, a dialogue to your custom entity. You can associate a dialogue to a non-playing character here. And if you want to associate a dialogue to it, well, you previously uh, had to do it from your scripts. But here you can uh, add a property and a value. You still need a script to uh, read the key and value, but uh, if you have several examples of the same custom entity model, well then, uh, you can put some different values to them and have a single script that reads this value. I don't know if I'm very clear, but custom properties are really, really powerful. Mm. Yeah, what else? Uh, change the pattern of existing tiles. We saw that. Oh, something very nice as well. Oh, there is this new button here. Export to image. Save. And if I open it. <laughs> Ta-da! I have a PNG file of... Um, the view as it was in the editor exactly. So if you don't want to see jumpers, teletransporters, you can just hide them using the usual stuff here and export your PNG image. So very useful if you want to make a map or a, a walkthrough or something like that. Previously you had to make uh, screen captures, but uh, if your map is big, you had to combine multiple screen captures, and it was a bit tedious. Oh, a lot to lock layers. Oh, I didn't, I didn't remember it was in 1.6. I thought it was <laughs> older than that. Let's say that you want to move these, this little pond here. Uh, normally, you you would create a selection rectangle. But, ah, there's something inside my, uh, below my mouse. I sh I'm sure you all had this problem before. Oh, and now I took this shadow. Anyway, so let's put this away and finally do our selection. And remove these guys with control. And then, okay, I can move my, my selection. And then I have to restore this. Uh, where was it exactly again? I'm not sure. Uh, and this one. Okay, so extremely annoying. You could sometimes get away by, if, if you are close enough to the outside of the map, you can try like that. But still you have, I have more things here to unselect and apparently there are still something selected because uh, my cliffs are very complicated and there are hidden stuff. Mm, by the way, this one is really not necessary. But uh, yeah. You all had this problem. And now you can just press Ctrl before you start your rectangle and it won't select the first clicked item. Very useful. Uh, yeah, if I let's say if I simply want to move this tree. It was not that easy before. I'm really far from the size of the map. So uh, what, what I would do in 1.5, I would uh, probably resize the background. And then, uh, yes, yes, I still have this chicken. Mm, how do I do it? I don't really can. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good example. I would probably do like that. And then with a multiple selection. Like this, yeah, finally. I moved it and then I should restore that. So uh, yeah, you you understand the issue. Cancel, cancel. And now you just do control. Oh, I missed it. But control 
like that. Yeah, nice. Great new features. You can also keep the selection when added new when adding new entities. Let's say you want to create some grass tiles here. Not sure where, but uh, let's say here. And if you press Ctrl when you add it, well, normally you you would press uh, you would right click if you want to add more more examples of it. But if additionally to right clicking you press Ctrl, then it keeps the previous selection. So. Uh, when everything is added, you can easily move them uh, or delete what you just added, I don't know. Or do anything. So that's a small handy feature. Mm, the typeset editor is also really improve, improved you can move multiple tile patterns at once and that was not even possible before you had to move them one by one this one and then this one oops etc allow to duplicate tile patterns so let's say you add more stuff in your png file here more color variants and then you can simply do that and say duplicate here and it will create identical tiles um, but just shifted and they will they will have the same properties so that's the improvement on the tile set editor additionally to border sets of course and the sprite editor is also improved in 1.6 um, you can reorder directions if you messed up something, you can uh, use this up. That was not possible before. I to change the frame number graphically. What did I do? Oh, I did duplicate. Undo. Let's say actually you no longer have two frames in your PNG, but uh, more than that. Uh, you had to change it only here before. Now you can do it uh, a bit like in the map editor, in the resize feature, like that. And now I have five frames and five five columns. But undo. So these improvements in the sprite editor were made by Maxis, and a lot of other minor improvements. I won't. Uh, go through all of them. Oh, something awesome for translators. And that's very recent. I did that for the translation of Zelda XD2. Otherwise, we we would have become crazy. And it would have uh, taken a lot more time. The, the position of the cursor is shown here and that's new line 2 colon 18 yeah because we don't want to um, exceed the limit on uh, each each line uh, you can show uh, a line separator here something but uh, first it's not that great it, it doesn't even work on all operating systems for some reasons it's quite buggy and sometimes you don't want you you don't you want something more precise than the just the limit and also for very long dialogues um, you want to know the the line number not only the column number because, for example, in in this uh, in my games so far, most of my games, the dialog box ha um, has three lines, 
so um, I have to take care of grouping things three by three special things too and nothing else and then three lines and then something else that fits on three lines and here I can know immediately the line number so uh, if it's a multiple of three it means that uh, I'm on the last line of a section So we were able to um, uh, translate the D2 more easily with that, and I never saw a single uh, line exceeding the its maximum size. <laughs> Unlike in previous <laughs> uh, project. Oh, I should also mention that we fixed a huge memory leak. If you had crashes or... Um, yeah. Simply when you closed your tabs here in 1.5. I think in 1.5. Yeah. Um, basically it was not releasing any memory at all. It was a huge memory leak, a very stupid one by the way in the code, but uh, you can open a map, close it, open it again, and it, the, memory, the memory used will just grow and grow until the editor crashes. <laughs> so <laughs> it was really a shame. And now uh, this is completely fixed, and, um, I will open my system monitor to check the memory used. <laughs> Solaris Quest Editor is here using like uh, 60 megabytes. If I open a few maps, some big maps and their tile sets, it will definitely need a lot more memory. Wait, only 81? Hmm, okay. That's good news. <laughs> Let's open something uh, heavier. Some th something that uses the tie set from FF Omega. You know, that huge tie set. That definitely requires a lot of memory. Yeah, almost 200 megabytes for only one map. Then I can say open a tile set, open a few other maps, open a dungeon map. Uh, it's, it's a tiny map, but it's a huge tile set as well. And this is a bigger map. So now I sh I'll probably use a lot, a lot memory. And I should stop because I'm streaming and coding some video. <laughs> yeah, 400 megabytes apparently. And if I close everything, it should go down. Mm. Yeah, it's not. It's still 400. Please uh, decrease. <laughs> yeah, it did not decrease at all. Uh, why? No idea. Mm, because I, I tested it very, I tested this recently and it was working like perfectly. Um, and back to uh, like 20 megabytes again. That's embarrassing. The demo effect, right? <laughs> no new tools to add enemies to the editor, no. If you want more details of, uh, about the exact number of features you can and bug fixes, you can uh, check the change log. But I only presented the new features of the quest editor and not uh, the ones of the engine itself.
So I just opened a huge map and closed it. And if I open it again, it should not increase at least. Because that was a bug. You could just simply do that and uh, after a few times your your memory was full. Oops. No. What? Oh, process. And now it stays stable. Okay. I'm still not sure what it didn't go back to the initial value. Uh, it might be the, um, the operating system that keeps um, some memory reserved even if it has been freed. At least we can see that uh, when I open the map and close it, and open it again, and close it again, there is no longer a huge leak, and a leak at all, let's say. It stays stable. Okay. And in the engine, there are a lot of new features as well. Um, apart from shaders, uh, a lot of improvement in the Lua API, in the scripting API. Okay, so I guess that's it for the this small uh, or this uh, long summary of the new features. After the release, I will do like uh, a tutorial video. Uh, to present 1.6. I don't know if it will be called a tutorial or something. Uh, yes, only 65. There are people both on the YouTube live and on the Twitch live. Um, I don't know if I'm up to date with all comments. <laughs> oh yes, you hear Zelda Retro. Oh, right, Zelda Retro. I never thought of, of that. Uh, I mean, just catching up with what you said a while ago. That's funny. Uh, not the right project. Yeah, you are. You came up with a much nicer solution of my problem here if I want to move this tree remember and the um, problem that uh, the background or the tiles below uh, are moving but you didn't want them selected what you can do is select any tile from your future selection and then control uh, I'm, I don't know why ne no one else thought of that before. I did not. Everyone was complaining about this problem and uh, <laughs> you're the first one to come up with this solution. You have some crashes with outside maps, Zelda Retro. Well, um, if you are using the latest snapshot, the latest Windows snapshot, you should not. The error of the disappear of the line, it also happened to me with the 1.5. Don't remember what we, this was about. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, if, there were, if there are no more questions, I think we will finish the stream. Um, next stream will be... I'm not, not sure about... I'm not sure about what. It won't be a Children of Solar stream because uh, New Link is already changing the maps. So I won't... I don't want to have any conflicts, of course. But uh, finishing the import feature 
allowing to import a full directory. That's not possible yet. And um, animate tiles with more than three frames. Yeah, we could totally do that on stream if you guys are interested. And about the 1.6 release, um, there are these two tasks plus f the shaders, f uh, finish the work and the UI of the shaders. And then, um, like I was saying at the beginning of this stream, reorganizing resources across all projects and resource packs in a consistent way and uh, provide more more exhaustive exhaustive resource packs both from for the the free resource pack and the Zelda resource pack okay guys in the text editor the line you can enable in the counter have disappeared one time really Hey, right endo. I was just um, finishing the stream here. Yeah, OLB, Soros Edition. <laughs> I should finish this one day. <laughs> All maps are finished. Mm, I have to make m now the, the scripts, basically. The, the yeah, all the scripting of the quest, uh, may, uh, the non-playing characters. I mean the the, the interactions with non, the non-playing characters, their dialogues, because all their sprites are done. The sprites of enemies are done as well. Uh, no, 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 no estimation, no release estimation, because uh, I'm always too optimistic. I mean, if I was only working on the quest editor. It would take like uh, only one month, but I have to work on the engine, on the quest editor. I have to help on all games of the team: Shadow of Solaris, uh, Zelda: A Link to the Dream. Uh, we are just talking about Zelda: Owning Begins. There's also Zelda, Zelda Mercury's Chest. And two weeks ago, uh, we worked on Zelda XD2, the, the English, tr English translation. Uh, I need to update the resource packs, the sample quest. Uh, so, yeah, a few months. Four to five months. Yeah, maybe. I would like if it was less, because auto tiles are. Auto tires are I'm uh, are finished since last summer, and they, they are so powerful that they deserve a release. I've been saying that for months, for months, and the release is still not here because we keep adding more and more stuff, more and more new features, new features. But uh, yeah, I just show you showed that these features are really great and really important so uh, at some point we will have to stop but um, it has been decided that uh, we don't want other features than, than what I presented tonight so uh, shaders, import And we'll be able to release. Okay. Uh, thank you all for watching. This is the end of this stream for tonight. Um, next stream will be. Um, not sure. I won't be home next week. But the week after that, I will be home. Maybe I'll still try to um, stream something uh, with a bad connection while I'm not home next week. But if I don't, I will definitely work on the project. 
Okay, guys, thank you all for your um, uh, for your support. I'm seeing other questions. Will there be an official Android version of Solaris? Yes, definitely. Yeah, there are a lot of people tonight. That's really encouraging. We'll try to keep on keep up the great work, and we we have an amazing team with uh, Dayarendor, STD, Gregoro, and, and uh, everybody, Eduardo, and uh, I, I I I forget a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you all for watching, and see you. Yeah, maybe next week or the week after that. Bye guys!